Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. On today's tutorial, I'm going to paint a landscape with some snow on the hills and we can really see in the distance with a strong, warm, vibrant sky as well and some trees more in the foreground. If you want to follow along exactly as I'm showing you, I'm using the app Procreate on the iPad. The brushes I'm going to be using are the free brushes within the app and really simple, I'm going to use the soft brush within the airbrushing as well as the medium brush. Then within Artistic, I'm going to be just using the Hearts brush. In terms of the colours, I've already pre-selected some colours. In this section you can see them. Down in the video description of this video, you'll find the hexadecimal codes and you can go to the value section here, type them in one at a time and press enter. The colour appears up here and you can piece them together yourself. Or next to the codes in the description is a link to my Patreon page and you can download a colour file there for free. In addition to that link, there are links to my Instagram and my Facebook page where I've got over 30,000 members now of that group and they post work and give feedback to each other and obviously I respond as well. So it's a really great community there. So click on the link after the video, come and join us in that community. So I've opened an A4 canvas and the first thing you're going to do, mainly because I don't like having a blank canvas, is to go to my first colour, which is this blue colour and I'll show you on the disc where it's located. So I'll grab that colour and it flood fills the entire canvas. I'm not going to change layer because this is really foundational stuff. So we're just going to go to the next colour along, which is this lighter blue. We're going to make sure we're on the airbrushing and soft brush. We're going to put it up quite to a large brush, about 15% and about, let's put it 100% opacity in fact. And I'm just going to aim right for the centre of the canvas maybe just a little bit upwards of that point as well. Then I'm going to go to the adjustment tool, the Gaussian blur, and I'm going to slide it across to about 80%. Then I'm going to go back to my layers, create another layer, use the same color again. I'm just going to reduce it slightly now to about 10% size, still at 100% opacity. And again, I'm going to aim for the center of that canvas doesn't need to be a straight line, it's just roughly in the centre there. We'll go to the Gaussian Blur again with an adjustment, Gaussian Blur, and just blur it in again, this time to about 40%. I'm going to go create another layer. I'm going to go to our third colour along. We're going to reduce it down to about 8%, keep it at 100% opacity, and we're just at the bottom of that area now, just slightly under the halfway. Again, it doesn't matter about it being a straight line particularly. I'm going to go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and just blur that in to about 30%. Again, create another layer. We're going to go to the fourth colour along this time. We're going to pretty much do the same thing as what we've just done. So I'm just going to go to the, over that area we've just created with this nice orange colour now. Again, adjustments, Gaussian blur. So I'll push that to about 50%. And one thing that happens when you do that is it diffuses the colour rather a lot. So you can actually multiply it simply by duplicating that layer and it will strengthen up the amount of that colour, which is really useful just to keep things organised. Perhaps I'll pinch those two layers together, which is quite tricky. And if you do have trouble doing that, all you need to do is tap on the layer, merge down and it will merge with the layer underneath. In fact, I'm going to merge all of these layers just to keep it a little bit more compact now. So. We've now got the main background layer and we've got this layer on top as well, which makes it easier if we want to move anything around. For example, if you wanted to move a certain area around, then you could do that. And on that basis, I might just put it up a little bit, not too much, just a smidge. Okay, so we're gonna create a new layer. So now we're just down to three layers again. I'm gonna to go to this fifth color, which you can see where it is on the color disc. I'm still on the soft brush but I'm going to turn it down now to about 5% and lower on the opacity to about 70%. So about two thirds of the way up and try and keep it roughly a straight line. If you think you're going to have trouble with that, you can always hold it and it will snap to a straight line. And then I am going to blur it in slightly. So adjustments, Gaussian blur, and just blur it in about 10%. Maybe I'll just strengthen up this side a little bit. It doesn't matter if it blurs downwards because there's going to be other features just covering that up. It's just the top edge that I'm interested in anyway. I want to make sure there's enough of it in this lower section. So again, 
Like I showed you earlier, sometimes the strength of the color is just not enough, so we can easily fix that and just duplicate the layer. And that's going to ramp it up, intensify it, and really create the effect that we want. So again, I'm just going to merge that layer down. So we've duplicated it, but we've pinched it together or merged it down to create just one layer again. Create another layer. Go to our colors. I'm going to use this orange color. And using the soft brush still, I'm going to put it at about 3% size and about 70% opacity and I'm just going to start at the top part of where this purple is just start teasing in bringing in a little bit of this orange so not very much on the edges so I'm pressing lightly over at the edge there and then it's going to be more over this side really perhaps increase the size a little bit to about 5% and reduce the opacity now to about 40% and I'm just going to start bringing in a little bit more of this more diffused over on this side I want it narrow over here but a bit broader over here so I'm going to create an effect where rather than having the effects of the cloud going straight left and right horizontal so it's going to become more dynamic so it's almost coming out at you over on this side so we can create an area perhaps where it rises over here and go over it a few times just very very lightly again it's only on a low opacity but you could still press hard and it would still be quite dramatic so i'm using a combination of that slightly lower opacity but i am pressing very very lightly as well now please be aware that the colors on camera might look slightly different than they do in person so it slightly oversaturates them on the camera that i use which is why i do provide the color codes so that you can be pretty confident that the colors you actually are using and have downloaded perhaps are the genuine colors that I am using on this tutorial. So expect it to be a little bit different in person, but don't worry about that. The overall effects will get there. Okay, so not too different on either side, but again, encroaching a little bit further up on this area. Create another layer, go back to our colors. Still on the soft brush, we're gonna use this yellow, but we're going to turn the size of that brush down to 2%, keep it at the 40% opacity, and I'm just going to pick out, we're going to do the sun quite central. It's low in the sky, it's gone going down behind the horizon point, but it's still having quite a dramatic effect on the actual cloud. So I'm keeping some broken gestures here. Maybe we can extend some of these lines just again Although it's on 40% I'm pressing extremely lightly for some of these gestures too. So if you're not confident about your ability to press really lightly, you could always just turn it down even more to about 20% and although you can still press, it's easier to press lightly. So maybe try that. Again, further exaggerating the sense that it encroaches up into this area. doesn't matter if you do a little bit too much with this yellow because we're going to use a darker color just to add some darker textures and just shut down some of these areas anyway so it isn't really a problem in fact let's create another layer go back to our colors and just as I was saying we've got a darker color here and we're going to use that with a small brush so the lower end of 2% we'll keep it at the 20% opacity and still on the soft brush we're going to start bringing in some more texture that just interrupts some of that lighter color anyway. So keep it quite broken, a little bit fragmented. Don't worry about going over some of the yellows. We can always remove some of this orange later on as we see fit. Maybe create some distant bands here, some Again, more sweeping textures, some stripes that are coming in from this side. Back to our colors. Now there's a couple of colors I'm realizing that I'm I'm wanting to add. So I'm gonna add them over on this bottom corner now. They'll still be, they'll be on the color palette that you downloaded initially, so don't worry about that. But I'm gonna add a nice pink color, maybe just a color that's slightly more towards the purple in addition to that. And I'm gonna use these two for extra details in the sky as well. But before we use those, I'm just going to use this yellow at the end and without really changing layer. So I've just been doing this darker color. I'm going to use this slightly darker yellow as well to build up this area. 
again, still on the, well, perhaps increase the size of the brush now to about 3%. And I'm just starting to build up some of these textures in this area, extend some of the light colors, and then on the edge here, in fact, I'm going to go to these colors now because I think they are going to be very useful. So I'm going to use a combination of the pinks and the orange. So I'm going to go for this lighter version. So there's one that's slightly more purple, one that's slightly more pink. I'm going to go for the pink, put it at 2% size, keep it at the 20% opacity. And I'm just going to allow this color now to create some broken texture on that edge. So just very faintly still, pressing very lightly, just starting to bring some more of this color into this area. I'm going to put it up slightly actually to 3%. Maybe bring some more of it sweeping in on this side. So like I said earlier, if you're having trouble pressing lightly, then just reduce it. We can reduce it even further. So let's put it at 10% opacity. And that way you can just be a little bit more liberal, not worry about it quite as much. Really just go for it. Add a load of this pink over at this side, perhaps. Okay, back to one of the darker colors again. I'm gonna alternate between those two. And maybe I'll go back to this purple and add some of that in there as well. I really do need some bits that just add a little bit of a darker contrasting tone. So I can use this purple. So it's the color that was down here. I can bring it up into the sky, just one or two places perhaps, just to merge with that orange. Maybe turn the size of the brush down even further to the lower end of 2%. I can just create some wisps of cloud. And it also just ties the two areas together. So you've got this low lying atmospheric element, but then just having just bits of it encroach into the higher areas just links the two together I think and we're going to bring it over to this side as well increase it again slightly if you need to so three four percent bring some more of its impact over here as well so you can see I'm using it quite softly but quite fragmented as well I do use that word quite a lot because I do think it it clearly describes we're keeping it quite broken so alternate between that larger size and then back down again, just to be a bit more precise, bring some of these bands, low lying bands in there as well. So stretched out stripes. The more skies you do, the more of this that you practice, it's gonna get a little bit better the more you do. So if this is your first attempt at following along with a sky, don't worry too much. It's okay to struggle. So I'm just going to increase that up again a little bit to about 4%. I'm just adding some of this darker purple now to just a hint that there's more of it up in this higher area as well. I might just shut down some of the, the brighter colour in this area. Back to my colours. I'm going to add some more of this orange in fact. So with 2% size and 10% opacity, I think I want to add some more of this orange in over to this area. Okay, so we've got quite a variety of different colors there, but the general effect you can see is starting to come together. I'm gonna to add a little bit more of the strongest yellow color. I'm gonna create another layer for this on top. I've already got a layer, a yellow layer there, but I'm gonna create another one anyway. I'm going to turn it down or make sure it's still low. So it's still at 2% size, but I'm going to put it higher on the opacity to about 30%. I'm just going to use it to really bring out some of the brightest colors again, especially in this area, just to further sell. And you could always turn it even lower on the opacity, on the size to the absolute lowest part of 2% because it does vary a little bit, even within that 2%. And just bring a bit more intensity of that sun here as well. We will come back to the sky, we'll add more to it, but we're going to start bringing our focus down to the actual rolling hills and landscape as well. So I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to go to my colors and we've got a purple here that is pretty much the same as that, but it is slightly darker, slightly more cooler. I'm going to go to my brushes. I'm going to use the medium brush. So I'm going to put it at 3%, but I'm going to put it at 100% opacity. And because I'm going to use the layer properties, I'm going to just have some bumps in that. I don't want to over exaggerate it because these are going to be more distant features. But I'm going to bring it all the way across deliberately as a wavy bumpy line. 
then I can just drag that color into that area and you can see if I just don't do anything it floods the whole area so I'll show you that again I'll drag it without removing the Apple Pencil but I can slide it back and now you can see it only fills the area that I want to if you look carefully there is actually a little line there so you can just go over there is a gap between the area you've filled and the actual edge of your line so you can easily just fix that it doesn't take a moment then I'm going to go to the layer properties by clicking on the N and you can turn the opacity down there so I'm just going to turn that down now to about 50% I might just go to that layer and blur it in slightly it's got a, a slightly too harsh crisp line so we'll just go to the Gaussian blur just blur it in not a lot 2% I'm going to create another layer I'm going to use the next color along and still in the same settings you can see I'm going to do something similar again but just a little bit lower this time some bits can jut up then we can do the same again we can just flood fill it creates the same problem again of this gap it's not an issue really you can just go over it again go to the layer properties or the N on the layer just reduce it a little bit this time so I'm going to put it at around 70% opacity create another layer go back to my colors so I've got this third color in this time and it's quite significantly darker now so we're still going to be on the medium brush put it at a 3% size I'm going to reduce it down now because I'm not going to play around too much with the layer opacity for these extra features I'm going to put it at 80% opacity and I'm just going to start bringing in this feature now I'm just going to more carefully create this top edge this area over here is going to be obscured by other features so we're really only focused on this part but I'm just going to bring it down now I'll have it on the slightly lower opacity at 80% because just by going over it a few times you create texture and sometimes that texture can be really useful so we're going to be adding some snow, some trees in the distance and just having that little hint of texture just stops it being so flat so that your imagination finds it easier to start to place in those things. So I'm having it slightly broader here and then it gets narrower over this side. So we've got this again, this illusion of perspective. Now before I use the, the next two dark colors, we're going to start adding some extra features some snow elements so I'm going to jump down to the first two colors in this area so we've got this lighter tone and I'm going to use a different layer for it so layer 11 now we're going to be really quite precise so we're going to turn the size of the brush to the lower end of 2% perhaps turn the opacity depth quite down to about 40% and I'm just going to start picking out in the distance some areas perhaps where we're going to add some snow so just some slightly random features you don't need to be too precise just adding some flattened areas where perhaps we don't have trees and the snow has just settled in some areas and then we can move across to other areas do something similar maybe turn the opacity even further down to about 20% and then we could add some hints of that for the absolute background as well so in the real distant areas you don't want it to be too dramatic just do it really lightly maybe with this low opacity you can just add a few more subtle features in these slightly more foreground areas as well you don't need to do too much of it back to these colors I'm going to use this second color along now so it's slightly brighter and I'm going to use that now so probably at the lower end of 2% 10% or 20% opacity will do actually and I'm going to add a few hints of this snowy color onto this feature so I'll keep it quite broken again I really do think that keeping that fragmented quality to this is really going to help the overall effect so just some points of snow here perhaps where the snow has just managed to find an area to settle in don't need to overdo that though it's just creating some small areas perhaps that are a little bit higher up once you're happy with that I'm going to create another layer 
and using the next two layers across, or colors across rather, I'm going to use this slightly darker color now, and I'm gonna start bringing in some flatter planes of snow before I start adding some trees on top. I'm gonna to increase it up to about 4% size, keep it on the 20% opacity, and I'm just gonna bring this color in now to bring in the color of the snow, but it's not as dull as some of the purple that was in the background we've already created. So it's just a little bit more saturated, more vibrant looking. And we'll just turn it down slightly to 2% size. And I'm just going to have perhaps an area encroaching a little bit further up as well, nibbling into this landscape up here a little bit, perhaps over here. Okay, I'm going to create another layer on top and go back to our colors. So I've used the first three, now I'm using this fourth color along. It's not quite black, but it is pretty dark. It's a dark blue, in fact. It's almost black, but it's not quite. And we're going to be on the medium brush still. I'm going to have it on a small brush size, so the lower end of 2%. And I'm going to have it a little bit higher up on the opacity to about 50%. And within these areas now, I'm just going to start bringing in some trees. Now, they really are going to be nondescript. It's just spikes really, almost blobs that break up, bits of that snow. So I'm gonna pick a line coming across here. So I'm gonna draw the trees upward of that point, maybe a cluster of them. So I'll zoom in a little bit. It's really not particularly clear and that's okay. You're just going for the, the general shape. We're not gonna to get too much detail on these ones. They are just creating an effect. So maybe leave a gap and have another one joining here. And then maybe another one here that's just in the middle of that almost the clearing area and another one and just start to build them up really now you can have a cluster of them perhaps they all cluster together in this area you can really shut down some of the light i'm just going to do some blobs and just a suggestion that they're encroaching up into this area again you really don't need to be specific because the illusion is created when you zoomed out anyway. I'm gonna encroach up into this area further. So again, just some broken textures. Now, obviously we're trying to think of an overall tree shape, so it's roughly that kind of shape. It's more, you know, textured than that, but that's roughly the effect. You don't need to be any more detailed than that for these distant ones. Sometimes it's just gonna be tiny blobs. Sometimes they'll cluster together. And all you'll see is just occasionally an individual tree or a couple of trees where again you're trying to represent that very rough shape so I'm just bringing this across now there's really not a lot of detail in these so don't worry too much about these ones at all Now, if you've overdone it, not a problem. You can just remove one or two, can't you? If you want to just create some slight gaps, perhaps, just to help emphasize one or two of the trees, then I can do that. I'm even gonna go to this bright color over on this side, perhaps just to go to the layer that was underneath that, to layer 12, and just create perhaps just a hint that there's a slight shift in tone in this area. Might be quite interesting. Quite a strong color that, I could have turned the opacity down, but that'll do. And whilst I'm still on this layer, I'm gonna to go to a darker color now. So I'm gonna to go to the fifth color in, and I'm going to use that with a 3% size and a low opacity, that's about 10%. And I'm just going to start adding perhaps some shadow, perhaps I'll turn the size of that brush down, in fact, to about 2%. Maybe some shadows, just to ground those trees to the ground a little bit but also so just some variation of tone in this area generally. So it's not gonna to look too flat then. Okay, so we're getting the overall distant effect. We need to have some more foreground elements now. So we're gonna to go to our top layer and create another layer on top of that. So on this new layer, we're gonna to go to this black, which is the last color in the middle. Go to our brushes, we use the medium brush, and we're gonna create a series of 
tree trunks first, just to spike. So I'm going to turn it down to the 1% size and about 50% opacity. And I'm just going to decide where to have the tops of some of my trees. So I'm going to have them really reaching up into the sky a little bit in some areas, just in one or two spots. So do some variety of heights. I'm going to start bringing them further down into this area. So I've got like a slope of a tree line. Some tall, some close together, some smaller, and we've got them generally going over into this area. Something like this. I can then, on each of those individual tree trunks, I can go back to my brushes, the artistic brush, the hearts brush, keep it at around 2% size, and I'll keep it at well, let's put it up to about 70% opacity. I'll zoom in just a little bit, and I'm gonna start adding some of the texture to these trees now using the hearts brush, just sweeping left to right. In fact, I'm gonna turn it down slightly, so really the lower end of 2%. And I'm just going to start building up the texture of some of these trees. Keep some gaps, it is really important when you're doing these types of trees that you don't keep it too uniform. Keep it quite random looking. I'm gonna turn the opacity up in fact. I'm gonna put it up to 100%. These are gonna be really silhouetted, so let's really go for it. So left to right, keep some gaps. Keep it slightly random if you can. And we're gonna do that all the way up to the top. I've just spent a little bit more time on the ones that are really clear up in this area. But again, you know, it's supposed to be a little bit random. We're more interested in the effect. It's quite impressionistic, really. It's quite loose, keeping the texture without spending too long on individual tiny elements. as we get further down, they can just condense and we don't see the gaps quite as much anyway. So I'm just gonna do this whole effect now for all of those trees. So this is a slightly time consuming element. It is gonna take you a good 10, 15 minutes just to create this effect, probably. And once you created that, Overall effect, we're just going to go slightly blurred. So we'll go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I just want to blur it in not much at all. 2% is plenty, just softens it slightly. I think it works better. I'm going to start adding some more features into this area. So I'm going to create another layer. So on this top layer, I'm just going to go back to my colors here. So I've got a slightly lighter, more blue tone, and you'll see that it does stand out a little bit. So I'm just gonna have it at around 3% size and low, so about 15% opacity. And I'm just gonna use that now to bring in some break in the texture here. And I might even go back on this top layer to that black color now. I'm gonna create a variety of smaller details so I can reduce the size of that brush and even turn the opacity up for this black to more like 40%, create some closer to details. Maybe some break in the snow. And then obviously, as we get further away, those little black kind of details get smaller. So it's a good way of forcing that sense of perspective is to have a detail that's really quite big here when it's closer to you. But then 
you show similar kind of things, but they get obviously dramatically smaller as they get further away. It really forces that sense of distance. I'm going to turn the opacity up on that, in fact, to about 70. Turn the size up to 3%. I really want to bring in some extra textures into this area, some rocks or just breaks in the snow, whatever they may be. You could add some grass and some other fine, really close up details, perhaps. I'm not going to get overly bogged down in those, but just a, a hint of something. And you can also alternate between that and something like this highlight color here, which is just at the end of this particular row, not those two, but this one. Turn that down to the lower end of two and put it really quite low at about 15. And in addition to the black, you could add some highlights of textures in addition to that. So maybe there's just some highlights that are catching on this outer edge. You decide what you want. You could spend quite a long time doing this type of texture, but I'm just trying to hint at something really. And then maybe we've got a blue color here. We could add some of that in there as well, just here and there. Just going back to some of the earlier sky layers. So we've got some other effects, like this orange, for example, on layer four. I'm just going to experiment with duplicating it and I'll just zoom back out so you can see the effect of that just by duplicating it and whether you can see that on camera it just brings out more of that warmth and that orange color which I quite like. I'm just looking at another layer, layer five for example we could try duplicating that it just doubles up the effect of that light. Duplication is a really useful way of just ramping up the drama so layer six let's duplicate that layer and again wow that really helps. In addition to that, I'm just going to go to the layer six, that layer I was just on, go back to my colors. I can start softening in some more features. So I'm going to go to this yellow, put it at around 4% size, 15% opacity. I can really start bringing in some more of this yellow, perhaps into this area, just to soften in some of this effect. Bring it some more of that light even, extend it further. It really helps. I'm going to do a little bit more up into that top corner. So I'm going to go to the top layer. I'm going to create another layer on top. I just want to bring some more of these light tones, especially these two, up into this top area. I'm not going to do much of it. So we're still on 4% size and 15% opacity. In fact, that's even too high. So I'm going to turn that down to something like 5%. I'm just going to bring some more texture into this area. Just hints. Just to stop it looking too empty in that top bit. I think I want to just add a little bit more orange now looking at that. So I'm going to go back again to my layer six. I'm going to use the orange just to hint more of that now. So we're going to keep it at 4% but we'll put it back up to about 15% again. I want to add a bit more of that orange into this area. I really like the, the effect that the orange has, so I'm just going to exaggerate that slightly. Okay, I'm going to leave that there for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you followed along and you're pleased with your results, then make sure to share them with me, either by tagging me on Instagram or just sharing them in the Facebook group. Hit the thumbs up and the bell notification on subscribe, and I'll catch you back here soon. See you later.